Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. I'm slowly realizing that this data juggling playlist has to stop now or otherwise it will go on forever. The more we are moving towards functional programming, the less programs we write. What we write instead is descriptions of our programs. And so in this functional world, everything is data. And so I would have to keep making these videos until the end of all times. So this here might be the last one in the series or maybe not, we'll see. In any case, the topic for today is juggling with functions, which are data and therefore they totally belong into this playlist. However, the purpose of this video is not educational as most of my other videos. It is rather motivational. I want to encourage you to not only watch videos, but also go out and play with the code without any purpose or direction. This will help you discover things at your own pace and also allow you to develop a sense for code smell. And so today we will just play with code and there will be no point in it. And no, this is not a pun on point freestyle. Don't be silly. The first half of this video is going to be very beginner friendly. The second half might get a bit too crazy. In any case, let's get right to it. As always, I'm in my Ubuntu 18.04 virtual machine and I'm using Windows as a host and Windows has a feature called virtual desktops, which gives me shortcuts, which allow me to switch between Windows like this and back to Ubuntu like that. Like in most of my videos, let's jump straight into code. Let me switch into my dev folder, which is currently empty. And I'm going to use one of my templates, one of my Jitterate templates. I have a video about this where we created this template, which is going to create a basic hello world project with our playground. I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds to load and we're gonna call it something like playground because well or function 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 playground function playground like this all right the organization is going to become dev inside you the package is just going to be dev inside you and let's open it with visual studio code like this it will take just a couple of seconds to open and we're not going to have any dependencies today so uh, we're just going to go and import the uh, blue build right away okay let's open the main uh, it's gonna metals is gonna wake up in just a couple of seconds. Yes, please import the build uh, While it's importing I'm gonna show you the properties, right? So we're in SPT version 138, which is at the moment of the recording the latest one uh, What else? Uh, let's go to the build Build at SPT. So Scala version is 213.1 and uh, oh, yeah, I forgot uh, usually when I record uh, I'm removing these flags uh, because this is the template that I'm um, that I'm using when I'm uh, creating my real projects but when I'm recording I'm usually disabling uh, all of these warnings okay so we need to uh, re-import everything again right so basically we just have a we just have a main method let's go back to it let's go back to it it's still importing and as soon as I start click save it's gonna uh, probably download Scala FMT or maybe not all right so uh, we're gonna start uh, just by having a very simple function in fact we don't need all of this space in fact let's not start before we actually start this PT let's start this PT all right so uh, yeah see that's exactly what I meant the Scala FMT would wake up eventually and would ruin the whole presentation for me all right so let's start with a simple function we're gonna call it F okay takes an int, produces a string, it just does int dot to string. Uh, we're gonna have another one, g, which is gonna take a string, which is a string, produce an option of character, and it is just going to take the first character, string dot had option. All right, let's start uh, running it continuously like this. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to print out f of 1337 then we're going to uh, wrap this in a string and pass it to g and we're going to have our first combination right so this is going to be g of f of 1337 let me save it like this all right now i'm going to show you a million and one ways to combine these functions and uh, you know basically the sky is the limit now because the ADA expansion and again ADA expansion is something that converts a method into a function uh, because ADA expansion is a little bit limited in scala we're going to help us out a little bit by creating these functions directly right so we're going to have a function that goes from int to a string and it's just going to be f and we're going to have gg which goes from string to option of character and it is going to be g all right, so now we're gonna have the first combination. Okay, so we're gonna have a function called combine one. It's gonna take an int like this. Okay, and it's gonna go, you know, through the string to the option of character. Okay, so it's gonna go to option of character like this. All right, now the first one we have already seen, right? So this is basically exactly this one, GF1337. Okay, so we're just gonna paste this over here. This is going to be the integer. Okay, so now we're gonna go and we're gonna print line 
and combine one of one three three seven and we don't really need these print lines so let me just throw this out like this let's do the next one i'm just going to duplicate this line bring it down a little bit it's going to be above the print line it's going to be called combine two and we're going to do it like a little bit more functional okay so we're going to do g now we have to do underscore because we need to explicitly tell the compiler to convert it into a function and now we can do compose f okay and we're passing it in okay so this is function occurring and also like this is pronounced g after f uh let me actually run it real quick so that you see that it does exactly the same thing all right so over here we're applying the f first and then the g right and this thing is doing exactly the same thing it's sort of like written in reverse well actually it's not in reverse right it's g after f so first we're going to do the f then we're going to do the g and because we have these helper functions uh we can just do gg and now it's compiled right so let me also demonstrate that without the underscore it's actually not going to compile okay because over here it knows that this is a function Function, and therefore the function has a method defined compose on it and therefore we can go and call it now let's also help us out a little bit and because we're dealing with functions now and functions are data uh, we can just pass them all into a sequence right so we can create a sequence of these functions right so these are the functions that go from int to option of character option of character come on character let me scroll down a little bit okay so uh, we're just going to pass in combine one and we're going to pass in combine two right in this case the ADA expansion is going to kick in without any issues because it knows the expected type it knows that in this sequence we're only going to have functions and therefore it converts this method into a function and it does exactly the same thing for this one okay now we're going to map all of them right so there is a function inside we're going to apply all the functions to 1337 technically it's the other way around we're going to apply the 1337 to the function okay and after that we're just going to do for each and we're going to do print line okay so now we can go over here and do that like this and the output should be exactly the same as before all right now let's also do the other way around let's have combine three so let me copy this one i'm going to do combine three and the more natural way for uh for programmers to write this would be uh f and then g okay so instead of g compose f uh we would do f and then g like this like this okay so i'm going to compile it for the same reason as before we need this weird underscore that will enforce the compiler to uh convert this into uh into the proper at expansion uh but now we can also do um, ff okay and let's not forget to go and use it over here so this is going to be combine three and the result should be exactly the same now let's also do combine four and this one was actually added in scala 213 okay uh, so we do over here combine four let's remove this it's behind an import scala.util.chaining okay uh so now we can we can take the int right and we can pipe it into f and we can pipe it into g okay now this thing is actually going to compile for the first time without add expansion all right uh because well there is add expansion but without like these underscores we're going to implement this thing uh in just a second in fact just just to see how it works in fact let's let's go and actually do this right now okay so we're going to go and we're going to create a file i'm going to call it i don't know just library library.scala okay we're going to have an object called library you know we're just playing around so we're going to go and implement all of these uh combinators ourselves okay so if you've seen my video about monads uh, i called this object point three all right this was the joke in the beginning of the video okay so we're going to have and then right it's going to have a b c okay it's going to take a function that goes from a to b and it's going to take a function that goes from b to c b to c and it's going to produce a function that goes from a to c okay how we're going to do this if you're not used to creating functions to returning functions from your functions you basically need to start writing them okay so we need to take produce a function that goes from a to c we're just starting writing it out a comes in and now we need to produce a c somehow what can we do with a well we can stick it into a b right what comes out well b comes out what can we do with the b well we can stick it into the b of c okay b c all right so there we, there we have it. This is literally the definition of and then, okay? And compose is going to be exactly the same way. I'm gonna have compose, but these two will be just switched, right? So it's gonna be like this, BC first, comma, then AB, okay? And the implementation is going to be exactly the same, right? We don't even need to reverse anything, okay? And because we're in a, you know, in a in a language which combines object orientation with, with functional programming, uh, we're also gonna have different kind of notations. So we can have an implicit class, syntax, syntax for and then. So A and B is gonna come in. We're gonna have a private val AB, AB, all right? And then we're gonna do inline, Final def, and just for fun, because I'm using Fura code, we're gonna use arrows. We're gonna do minus, minus, and then greater than symbol. It's gonna create an arrow, and C comes in, right? So the whole purpose, like, well, not the whole purpose of object orientation, but the whole purpose of the object-oriented notation is basically to take the C and to apply 
partially basically right so the a and b are going to be here and the c is going to be over there bc is going to come in over here right so this function from b to c and it's going to produce a function that goes from a to c and it's just going to delegate to uh, point three dot and then a b bc okay so basically what this allows us to do is instead of writing something like this we would be able to just write a b arrow to the right bc right it's basically the same as we have right now where we're saying a b um and then okay let's also have this for the for the other one so uh let me clone this one put it over here what's happening with my voice today okay so this is the syntax for compose okay so um okay let's do b and c and this is going to be the function bc right this is going to be the first one whoops okay so this is going to be b and this is going to be c and over here we're going to have the a that comes in and this is going to be the function a b goes from a to b and produces the function of a c and we're just going to call we're just going to call compose right we can also call and then and just you know swap them okay uh but we're gonna call compose and do bc a b okay and let's call it uh let's call it after well actually let's just revert this arrow um not like this like this okay let's revert this arrow and let's also duplicate these two lines and bring them down and let's also call it after after okay we're just we're just playing around okay so it's not in line oh my god it's just in line like this all right let's also have the syntax for pipe we don't need to define pipe ourselves because the whole purpose of it is to be used as a as a syntax okay so we're gonna have uh final implicit class syntax syntax for pipe by the way these syntax classes hopefully they will go away in scala 3 they will be auto generated for us or maybe the other way around you know you, you will be able to define just a syntax one and you know the other notation is just going to work but i'm not 100 percent sure about this i haven't played around with this uh yet i will though so let's do the same at inline final dev pipe and some b comes in okay so the function from a to b comes in okay and b comes out and all it does it just applies this function okay a b a like this all right let's also have another syntax by the way it would be kind of cool if we could do this like an actual pipe you know like in like in uh, linux okay um but it's going to collide you know if you have booleans you know so um so instead um you know what we're going to do we're going to overload this one right usually if this was like a production level library this would not be ideal because this would be like very confusing for our users but in, in this case i believe it does exactly the same thing as and then and so we can well, so we're going to keep it okay so we're going to keep it like this um now let's go back to main and uh, what we can do now is we can just go up and we can just import our library import library like this let's go down and remove this scala union chaining now because we don't need it because we have our own like this let's see oh man we actually have forgot forgotten to use it combined for okay so uh yeah let's also do this once with scala util chaining so that you see that it does exactly the same thing import scala dot util dot chaining like this all right so um maybe we don't need to import the library because it collides now like this yeah okay so uh let's have this one now and throw this one out because ours is better anyway like this and there we go okay so now we can also go and use the other one so for example we can have um let's take this one right so combine combine 2a would be something like gg after f let's have another one right away we're gonna have 2b right we're gonna say that first it's gonna be f and then the result is going to fly into the g like this let's save them and uh, let's also do combine three let's do combine combine three a we're just gonna say ff and then it's gonna go into the g like this and the most fun one is going to be this one combined for a just gonna use these arrows okay so basically see okay the int it goes into the f and then it goes into the g let's not forget to use them so i think we have 2a and 2b and then we have 3a and then we have 4a like this okay all of them should should uh, deliver d1 right so they all take in the first character of this 1337 which will be converted into a string first so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about function current right over here we have function current so uh let's go and do um let's have a separate thing so let's let me uh cut out these print lines so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a def plus uh 
x comes in, y comes in, and uh, the n comes out. Okay, so it just does x plus y, I'm going to go into a print line, plus 1, 2, like this. So let's scroll down a little bit like this, and let me duplicate this line. I'm going to bring it down, and this is going to be plus current like this. And the only difference is instead of this comma, we're going to have, um, you know, basically a second parameter list. Okay, the um, code is still going to look exactly the same, just that when we call it, we're going to do 1, and then we're going to do Two, right, so this is basically exactly the same thing as we did above uh, over um, over here, right? Function curring. We talked about function curring a long, long time ago. All right, so uh, let's go and continue. Let's say plus curry manually, right? So x comes in, okay, but now it produces a function that goes from int to int, okay? So now we're gonna have a function that takes the y and does the same as before, x plus y, right? And the invocation is exactly the same, right? Plus uh, curry. Um, manually come on manually like this all right the next one that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this one and we're going to say plus curried plus curried um come on even more manually okay so we're just going to go and over here we're going to say that this is going to be a function that it comes in and a function from into it comes out okay so it's exactly the same as before it just said we have x and arrow to the right we have y arrow to the right and now we can do x plus y like this okay the invocation looks exactly the same as before let me scroll down a little bit let me uh clone this one go and replace this one all right so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to see how we can curve functions automatically okay so we're going to go in and say plus curry automatically and the signature is going to be the same int int oh come on what's wrong int 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 Okay, so now we're going to take our plus, right? We need to help us out with the, with the add expansion, right? So we can do this. And now Scala offers us a curried helper, right? We're not going to defi define it yourself because it's it's way too straightforward, okay? And let's also do the other way around, plus uncurried, right? So we're going to have int, int, and then int like this, right? So we go to function. This is a companion object for function. We call uncurried, uncurried, and we're passing in the plus curried, Right, one of them, one of the one of the plus uncurried ones. Uh, let's not forget to call them. So uh, we're gonna call uh, this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Print line. Okay, one and two, and we're gonna bring it down. And this is going to be the uncurried one again. So this is going to be one and two like this. There we go. Unless. Man, what's wrong with typing today? Let's also not forget that classes are just glorified current functions that we talked about in the video about, um, it was actually the first time when we introduced the object orientation. All right, so we can have final case class plus x comes in over here and we're going to do def apply y comes in over here and comes out. So it does x plus y, same as before like this. And the invocation looks exactly the same as before. Right? so plus x and y right and we could even go and um well x and y actually have to specify them right so it's the one and this is the two we could actually go and uh, say that this one extends a function that goes from int to int okay so this effectively becomes a final override like this okay now we can go and uh, do exactly the same thing for tuppling okay so this was function current now we're going to do tuppling in fact uh let me go to all of the print lines well not all of the print lines hold on where's the first one or this one do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. yeah all of these ones let's comment them up all right let's go down again and now we're going to have a def plus we're going to call it tupled or tupled i still have no idea how to pronounce it correctly so um so the tuple is going to come in and int is going to come out or tuple match tuple match okay uh case x comma y it's going to be x plus why? By the way, we're not going to uh, play with um, with partial functions today, and also we're not going to play with partially applied functions. Uh, well, with the exception of the add ex expansion. Okay, so uh, let's go and call this uh, print line plus a tupled. Um, so we need to be careful. We need to do one, two. Is it one too many? No, it's alright. Okay, plus one, two. Okay, or you can do you know the um, the fancy syntax for for tuples, right? So you can do one, one, two like this. Uh, whatever you prefer. All right, so uh, let's now go and do val uh, plus tupled func, right? So it's going to be the same as before. Note the double uh, double parents, right? So this means that a tuple comes in, okay? 
um, sorry, tuple, tuple, doo -doo 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 -doo. like this. A tuple comes in and integer comes out, right? And over here we can do just directly the pattern match, okay? So x, y, x plus y, okay? So we can go over here and we can do a print line uh, plus tupled func like this, and we just need to give it the tuple like that. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna tuple automatically. So we're gonna have plus tupled automatically. In fact, let me save some time and just copy this signature. Oops, that was supposed to save us some time. Okay, like this. And we can just go and paste this over here like that. And let's not forget the colon over here. And actually this doesn't need to be a def. It's gonna be a val like this. We're gonna do plus, we're gonna take it like this. And the same as dot curried, uh, we're gonna say dot tuppled, okay? Like this, all right? And then we can go and call it print line uh, plus tuppled automatically like this. I'm gonna give it a one and a two like this. Now let's go and do plus untuppled, plus untuppled. It's gonna be int, int. Notice that we don't have the double parents now, okay? So we're gonna have function, and the same as before, same as uncurred, we're gonna say untuppled. Untuppled, and we're gonna do plus tuppled, and we need to help out with the underscore, okay? So we can go print line, plus untuppled, okay? Now we can just do one and two, like this, okay? Let's also do the same thing for the class. Okay, so we're gonna do a final case class, plus tuppled, tuple comes in, and then we can also do the extends part right away. It's gonna be a function where nothing comes in, well, unit comes in and comes out. So we can do a final override, def apply, int equals tuple match, a lot of boilerplate, tuple match, case x, y, is going to be x plus y, like this. And the invocation is gonna look like this, print line, plus tupled, right? I'm gonna have one and two, and we need to call the apply like this. All right, it's not gonna be called automatically, right? So if we do if we do that, it's just gonna, um, you know, give us the object, which extends the function, and therefore the, the two string is even uh, overwritten. And also let me show you the last one because we're just playing around. Just please don't write code like this in production, right? We're just we're just playing. Okay, so let's take the tuple, and now let's pipe that tuple, or, you know, in fact, we can take our, uh, you know, one of our own things, right? So this is, this is our pipe, right? So you're taking the tuple, and we're piping it into into plus, which is tuple, like this. Let's see if the compiler works. Yes, it does. Okay, so it looks kind of weird, right? So there's one arrow like this and one arrow like that. Or, you know, let's take one of the plus tuple, uh, plus untuppled, plus, uh, yeah, let's take this one. So we can do that. Okay, this this reads much, much much more nicely, but uh, you know neither of them look you know good enough for production. Okay, we're we're just playing here. Okay, uh, by the way, let me actually show you a good um, example for when to use pipe because um, the thing is that uh, compose. So um, let's go up. So compose it usually has better type inference than than after. Let me actually show you an example. So we're gonna go down. In fact, let me let me remove the print lines again real quick. Mm -hmm. This is the first one. There we go, like this. Okay, so let me go down. Let's create some more space. So uh, let's say if we have a typical, typical person name and well, actually this one is not typical. We're gonna have started on day of year, right? So it can be one through three hundred sixty-five. Okay, and we're gonna have a function called is even goes from into boolean has nothing to do with the person person. Okay, so whatever comes in modulo two equals equals zero. Okay, so this is the typical easy even one, right? And let's say that we wanted to have a function that does the same thing, but for a person, right? So we, we're gonna call it, did person start on day of year, right? Person to Boolean, right? So basically we need to adapt uh, this signature to this signature, right? Now we could obviously, obviously do it manually, right? We could just call, we could just call is even, right? And we could just take uh, something like this, right? So this is gonna be our person. We're gonna just start it on day of year and then it turns out that it doesn't compile right it doesn't compile uh because scala doesn't like the fact that um it doesn't know what the type of this is right so you can go over here and you can say okay this is going to be a person that start that that is starting to to look ugly and in fact in this case it doesn't even compile for some reason um 
in any case, right? So we can just do P and we can just say P comes in over here, right? So this is this is going to work, okay? Now it turns out that we can actually do this thing with the pipe, right? So we can do this underscore dot uh, started on day of year, right? And we can just pipe that into is even, okay? Let, let me remove this one, okay? So this is going to work. And um, with our fancy syntax, uh, it's even gonna work like this probably, let's see, is even like this. Yeah, so if you were to take something like this, Right, start it on day of year, and we would do, and then, and then is even, it's not gonna compile, but if we if we uh, turn them around, okay, so if we go and we're gonna say is even, uh, compose, and we're gonna say start tid on day of year, then it's actually gonna work, right? So uh, this is basically our uh, our arrow in this direction. I'm not even sure, yeah, okay, so it still needs still needs parents over here. And this is what I meant uh, before when I said that uh, Compose usually have a, um, has a better type inference than um, and that. Let's actually call them. Let's not forget to call them. Let's take this one, go down like this, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do a print line, a print line. Let's see, the, like all of these parents, you know what? We're gonna do, did person start uh, on day of year? And we're gonna give it the person. It's gonna be Alice and it's going to be one and what we're going to do is just, we're just going to pipe it all right so we're just going to do pipe it into print line okay much better okay reads much much more nicely okay and this one is going to be this one is going to be bob okay not found value okay did i call it wrong did person what did that what did i do wrong oh the last character all right there we go okay so we're gonna have false and true bob started on the even day of the year all right. Now there's clearly some uh, relationship between and then and compose, and we'll see it in just a bit. Uh, for now, let's just keep having fun with the person real quick. So let's go and do um, Alice was started on day of year, right? So this is going to be a partial function application where we basically fix one of the types, right? So it's going to be int to person, which we're going to do just person. So Alice is fixed, but you can still pass uh, pass in another another uh, integer like this. Okay, so uh, let's go and call it. Let's do Alice was started on day of year one. And we're going to pipe that into a print line like this. And let's do the same thing with the two. Okay, maybe, maybe let's remove these two print lines. All right, and another way we could do this is basically just by saying that it's person carried was Alice, right? So it's basically person carried, right? And then we're 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 applying. So it's going to be a function that you know it, it takes a string, um, Alice, Alice. Okay. So the result over here, right? Person dot carried. It's going to be a function that takes a string and then it produces a function that takes the int and produces a person. Okay. So we're fixing the the string to be Alice, and then over here we're we're specifying the other parameter, which is which is the integer. Okay. And uh, we can also uh, do this sort of manually, right? We can call it create uh, person step by step right so it's going to be exactly what i just said string comes in function from into boolean comes out which is exactly person curried right person dot curried okay person curried okay so now we can go and do pre um i don't want to do this print line anymore like this okay so we're just gonna we're just gonna call this one okay we're gonna do alice one and we're gonna pipe that into print line and we're gonna do the same thing for bob bob and we're gonna have a two pipe it into a print line like this uh it doesn't like me why doesn't why doesn't like me mm -hmm. person boolean oh yeah person person there we go string in person the next thing we're going to add is actually going to be something that is not in the standard library let's go into library and add a function called flip flip a b c okay so a function is going to be well a b c is going to come out come in right a b C like this and then B A C is gonna come out. Okay, super easy to, to implement, right? So it's it's the same as before, right? We're gonna say, okay, we need a function that where B comes in, okay, and then it's gonna need to produce a function where A comes in, okay, and now we need to produce a C somehow. Okay, how we're gonna do this? Well, we're just gonna call A B C with first it needs the A, and then a function from B to C comes out, and then we're gonna pass in the B, right? So we're literally literally just flipping flipping the A and the B. Okay, so here the B was first, over here the A is first. Okay, let's not forget the syntax, and also I don't wanna uh, waste your time so uh, i'm gonna start copy pasting some stuff okay so let's go and put it over here 
All right, so this is a syntax for flip uh, where, you know, ABC comes in over here and, um, you know, the reverted one comes out, right? So it's basically just, um, just delegation. And by the way, I have a friend who has more experience than me in functional programming. And I was just playing around and I discovered this one myself, right? This one flips. I just kind of wanted, you know, to have it okay and i asked him if, if something like this you know is a thing you know and, and if it does and if it has a name and he said that if it is a thing then i don't know if it exists right I, I don't know about it and i was happy for like 60 seconds you know i was about to coin this thing you know vlad's flip or something right and then he googles the shit and he finds this in in haskell wiki right and it's actually called like this and the signature is exactly like this right so not only did they steal my idea they also stole my name okay in fact i'm actually gonna go and show it to you i have it prepared over here See, it looks exactly like this. I swear to God, I did not know about it, right? So ABC comes in, BAC comes out. Okay, it does exactly, exactly the same thing. All right, let's go back to my VM. All right, let's go and play with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do print line person dot curried, right? And we're going to do Alice and we're going to do, we're going to do one and we're going to do Bob. We're going to do two. Okay, and now we can do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and now we can do over here. I'm gonna do flipped and this means that we can specify the integer first like this and then in the string like this right and the result should be exactly the same whoops exactly the same as before like this all right let's actually go and clean up a couple of print lines so uh, basically these ones these ones these ones these ones all of them all of them like this Okay, now we're not creating a, a library for pr for production purposes, so it's it's fine that it only works for you know the the first two parameters. Uh, well, technically the first two parameter lists of a of a current function, right? So because if you had a function that goes you know that has like three parameters and produces the fourth one, this flip would not would not work. But um, you know it's fine for us. All right, now uh, let's go into the second part of the video, which is going to be a bit more complicated, and this is the part that talks about the relationship between map and and then. Okay, so uh, we can go and take a range from one to three okay and we can map it into f and we can map it into g right this is these are the, the f's and g's that we had before okay and we can then pipe it into print line okay like this all right it doesn't like me let's do gg like this all right so uh we can have this uh but what we can also do is we could compose f f f and gg okay like this in fact i believe over here we can use just uh, just one one g Okay, and uh, also we can go the other way around, right? So we can have the GG over here, and we can do the this one over here. No, nope, not this one. Not this one. I want this one, like this. Okay. Uh, what's what's wrong? It's probably uh, maybe maybe like this. Hold up. No, let's do both. No, okay. In this case, this is a, this is a problem with precedence. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's have these between. Okay, right. So it's exactly the same. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, let's remove that and let's remove that like this and um by the way like in this one for example we did not need uh the curly uh not the curly but we did not need the the parents uh just because we use the um the minus sign and the um the operators in scala they usually have like higher precedence than um you know alphanumeric things okay so if we were to use and then uh, and then over here it's not going to compile right we would need to do we would need to do this in fact maybe it's less um less confusing let me actually go and do uh, compose, I believe that is fine like this. By the way, in the Scala util chaining import, there's also another version of pipe. So if we go to um, to pipe over here, let me just clone it, okay? So this version, basically it does exactly the same, it looks exactly the same, it's called tap, okay? But what it does is, um, after it retrieves this B, it actually throws it out, okay? So it actually throws, throws it out and produces an A instead, right? So it basically gives us the same A that we called this method on, okay? And because like the result is thrown out, like usually the result type is going to be unit and for better type inference, um, the generic parameter is still uh, left in there, uh, but it's usually called U, right? So if you look into the um, standard library, you're gonna see that it's called U, right? But it looks exactly the same as, as pipe. It's just that pipe returns a B and tap returns the A, okay? So it's called uh, tap like this. And uh, what tap will allow us to do is, um, sorry, A comes up, okay? So what tap allows me to do is, it allows me to show you the types, okay? So over here, we were using pipe, pipe, okay? 
and which means that that uh, oh my god what did i just do which means that the results are going to be unit right so this is a and this is a unit okay and we're gonna do b and we're gonna do c let's actually have a b and let's actually have a c right but if i wanted to show you the type of this thing and still have a print line i could just switch it to tap i could switch it to tap and now the types over here would be sequence of option of character right so what's happening behind the scenes is that it side effects the print line but then it still returns me the thing that i called you know tap on right so it still gives me this thing which is the sequence of option of of character all right now it turns out that there's a this clear relationship between map and and then and the reason for that is remember that map comes from functors and if we were to define a functor so in this case this is a functor for a range all right for for a list uh, but if we were to define a functor for a function then we would see that the implementation for map is just and then and this is exactly what we're going to do next all right so let's go into the library and create a functor i don't want to go to the bottom or maybe i do yeah i want to go to the bottom okay so we're going to have a trade functor functor some f comes in like this and you've probably seen the functor many times before i have mentioned in so many videos so um usually we're going to have like a b whoops a b like this okay so some function is going to come in f of a and the function, um, sorry, not the function. So some f of a is going to come in, some context is going to come in. Uh, the function is going to come in from a to b, and we're going to produce an f of b like this. Now, in this case, we're going to play around with functions, and functions have two parameters. So we're going to have a functor for the second parameter of the function. And therefore, just for ease of readability, we're going to shift these letters a little bit, okay? So our b is going to be c, and our a is going to be b. Right? And the reason we're doing this is going to become evident just right here. So if we go and do a final implicit def, we're going to say this is going to be a functor for functions from A. Right? So this is the A, right? and this is exactly why I have BC over here for better readability. Okay? So this is going to be a functor, and again, functor needs an F with only one hole, but a function has two holes. Okay? So this is going to be a functor from A to some other B. Right? So we're using the... Um, the kind projector plugin that I have in my template. So uh, it's over here, kind projector. We have a file called dependencies where kind projector is defined simply as a val that goes to this plugin, right? So this is a compiler plugin, uh, which allows us to use the star over here. We're also gonna uh, desugar this in just a second once I, um, once I uh, stop, um, once I finish typing this, okay? So it's gonna be new functor, okay? For, from A to star. You know what? Uh, let's not go from A to star. Let's let's do this uh, syntax thing, okay? So we're going to go and we're going to have a type alias over here. So it's going to be private this, private this type. So it's going to be from some A, okay? And it's going to be a type. It's, it's, this is actually an existential type. So this is a type that only works uh, for some type that is inside of it, which is two, okay? Two, okay? With some plus B. Okay, so basically we're partially applying the function, right? So this is this is like A to B, right? Uh, but we're like, you know, uh, taking it apart, partially applying it so that A comes in here and B comes in over there, okay? And then we can we can actually, um, uh, hold on, let me, let me do this. Um, I just wanted to compile, okay? So let's go and uh, ask Bloop to define map for us. Oh, come on, you could have, you could have just done that. Just done that for me. All right. So uh, this this type over here is exactly the same as over here, and it's exactly the same as this one over there, right? So we can do from a, and then we need to do this the pound symbol, and we need to do two. Okay. So these types are exactly the same. You know, you can pause the video and, and look at them to to understand exactly how they're the same. But these are exactly the cases where the kind projector plugin kind of saves your ass, right? So it's it's way more convenient to write this than to write this. In fact, I'm gonna leave it to to show you that this is actually exactly the same. Now we're gonna implement map, and if we just go and do F A and then F, then it's gonna compile. Basically, function composition, right? Let's also have a, a syntax for map. So let's go and have it underneath. Uh, final implicit class uh, syntax for map same as always right so we're going to have an f over here but we need it to be a functor we're going to have some b we're going to have a private val fb f of b and we're going to have at inline inline def let's do the final final def map c so it's, it's the same as before right so we're just 
taking it apart, right? So this is the object-oriented uh, notation, okay? Uh, B to C produces an F of C, and it's going to grab the functor, functor for F, and it's going to call map on it by passing in the F of B and the F, like this. All right, and also in Scala 3, uh, there is an overload of the simplicity function, which is called the, uh, which is why we're going to go and uh, implement it over here. It's going to be an object, the, whoops, curly braces, the, and it's going to look exactly like implicitly, right? So some sort of A comes A implicitly, and we're just going to return it, okay? Now, instead of implicitly, we can just say the functor for F on that functor called map, okay? Now, um, we, I also want to have, you know, this arrow syntax, uh, but I want to make sure that we understand which one is called. So I'm going to have, well, actually, let me just clone this one, right? So um, <laughs> the implementation is exactly the same. Well, actually, we could just call map, map f, okay? Like this, we can call it map, okay? So originally, I, I would, would have wanted to do something like this, right? But I want, I want us to be sure that we're calling this one, um, you know, this one and not the map on on the list in our example okay so instead i'm gonna do that that okay so uh this is fear code by the way and uh, so behind the scenes is this 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 right so whereas the um the regular um whereas the other one was like this okay um, okay so this one has two minuses and the arrow and the other one has uh, one minus and, and two arrows okay uh let me let me remove this by the way, I'm, I'm starting to play around with Vim a little bit, and Vim has a uh, way, I haven't figured it out, but I, but I saw like some other guy had it. Um, so you can have ligatures, right, if your terminal emulator supports it, but then on the line that you're currently in, the ligatures are gonna be disabled, right? So uh, because my cursor would be on this line, uh, you would actually see exactly these characters. And it's actually um, kind of fun. I might be switching to Vim at some point. Uh, let's see, it's gonna take me forever though to, to get used to it. Okay, so this is basically the map, and now we can go over here, and uh, so for example, over here, we're saying uh, map and map. So now we copy, can copy that, and we can call that, right? So because we have like these parentheses, now we know that we're calling map on the function, right? This is exactly why, you know, oh, I didn't want to do this, right? Because then you wouldn't see exactly which one we're calling, right? But we can actually go and do uh, this one, okay? Like this and like this, right? Because like the point is that if I have a map over here, right then you don't know are we calling the map on the list or are we calling the map on this function and that's exactly why i gave it like a different name like this right so that we know okay we're actually calling our thing and the result is, is exactly the same so most of the people are familiar with functors these days but um, it turns out that functors actually have an evil twin which is called a contravariant functor okay so we're going to go and define it so right basically the functor is, you know, for functions is the same as map, right? So map and, and then they have the similarity. There has to be like the other thing for compose, right? And this is the contravariant functor. So we're just gonna go and, um, I don't wanna start copy pasting stuff because the contravariant functor is so confusing because it's like in reverse. And I'm sure that we're gonna make uh, some mistakes with the letters. So let's go and do contravariant functor for F, right? So, um, Actually, for this one, I'm going to copy it, right? So we're going to uh, have it like this, right? So this one, ha the functor has a map, and the contravariant functor has a contra map. And it looks exactly the same, it's just that this function over here is reversed. So it goes from B to C, but this one actually goes from C to B, right? So this is the relationship between and then and compose, okay? So this is going to be the contra map. Because the name is so long, we're also going to have an, an alias. We're just going to say contra, contra for some F, okay? Uh, which is going to be a contra variant blah 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 for f okay cool so uh we're gonna have the type alias in reverse as well uh, the same as we had before so now we're gonna have uh actually let me let me have it next to the other one okay so let's go over here so this is going to be the one in reverse right so we're gonna start with a two okay so this is going to be plus a okay and we're gonna have the from type from it's gonna be the contravariant B, it's going to be B to A, like this, all right? So we can go and um, have the, the syntax for it, uh, which I'm scared to copy-paste because uh, when I was preparing for this video, I made so many mistakes with the letters, it's so easy to get lost in the letters. Okay, contra for functions from A, it's going to be a contra, okay, star to A, right? So it's basically like a mirror, okay? Now we can do a contra to, to A, 
from like this and now it's going to be a well actually we can um, let bloop define it for us like this bloop and metals I'm sometimes saying bloop when I mean metals but you know if you've seen my videos about uh, metals and bloop they're very very uh, related you know metals is using bloop okay and the definition for this is just going to be fb compose f right this should be called fb see that's what's happening when you start copy pasting stuff this is f of b like this all right cool now this video is getting too long as always so i'm just going to go and copy some syntax for contra map um so this is syntax for map and this is going to be syntax for contra map right so basically it's exactly the same thing just the arrow goes to the other you know into the other side and uh yeah the some some letters are, are flipped now the problem with this though is that um the compiler doesn't like it right so if we go for example over here and we're gonna do that okay it's not gonna it's not gonna find this instance uh somehow uh, well actually let's do this just to be sure that um yeah so this is basically what it says this this value is not a member of string so what we need to do is we need to go and define uh, this uh, syntax specific not for some app that has a contravariant functor but specifically for functions okay so um this one i'm actually going to tap out so it's going to be implicit class so look at this one while i'm typing this one okay i'm going to call it syntax for uh contra map specifically specifically for functions that go from a to b okay so um we're going to have a private val right so this is going to be our f of b it's going to be a function from b to a okay so um now we're going to go and okay these ones i can copy paste i can copy paste like these okay i can copy paste put them over here okay i just need like everywhere where we're saying uh, f of c i'm going to say that this is a function that goes from c to a c to a okay and over here we need to get the contra for this type like that all right so it's basically a bunch of bunch of boilerplate which is why you know one of the main reasons why libraries like uh, cats or scalazi are very useful because they they type all of this shit out for you all right so now as you can see this compiles and does exactly the same thing as before all right so uh this also means that um over over there over here where we are um, having uh, problems uh, compiling stuff right we could do where's our compose yeah okay so this is our compose right so instead of instead of this we can now do a contra map contra map like this all right or our fancy new operator like this all right cool right because compose and contra map are um, uh, essentially the same okay now the next part is going to be a little bit more complicated we're going to talk about monads we, we have a dedicated playlist about monads so if this goes too crazy for you just just go and watch that first the purpose for monads is to be able to compose special kinds of functions right so it's not the typical functions that go from a to b and from b to c it's functions that go from a to b which is wrapped into some context okay and so um we're going to go into point three and we're basically going to copy um copy and then and we're just gonna do and then classly. And by the way, classly is not some weird thing from category theory. This is just happens to be a name of a Swiss mathematician who, um, I'm not sure if he discovered these functions. Uh, maybe he was just playing around with these functions a lot. So uh, yeah, it's just named after him. All right, so um, as I already said, so it's gonna compose, uh, let me actually save this real quick, okay? So it's gonna compose not the typical functions that go from A to B, it's gonna compose the classly functions or classly arrows as they're called in um, category theory, okay? So there's going to be some other context, right? So there's gonna be some F over here, right? And so the first function is going to go from a to f of b okay and this is the problem right so the second function it is not going to start with f of b because otherwise this would be like regular composition okay um, the other function um, actually starts with b right so we need something which is going to be the monad that needs to go somehow under this f and get out this b okay so by the way this is function a of b and this is function uh b f c right because they're they all produce functions that are wrapped into this context okay and this one as well okay like this um let's actually remove that let's have a couple of question marks because i'm sure that scala fmt is going to do this okay now implementing this is basically very straightforward it's exactly the same as, as before as always you know we need to start with an a we need to produce an f of c somehow okay now uh what can we do with an a well we can stick it into afp okay um what comes out is f of b right but but now we're kind of stuck 
we, we can't do anything with an f of b, right? We can't uh, take f of b and stick this into this function, for example. So we need we need some sort of helper, which is going to be the monad, right? So we're going to say, okay, so this f, it actually needs a monad, right? It needs to have a monad. So now, now that we can um, have the monad, okay, we're going to say, give us the monad, okay? On that monad, we're going to call some sort of function, and this function is going to be called flat map, as we already know, right? We're going to call flat map, and the first parameter we're going to pass in is just going to be this, and whatever we have left over, which is BFC, right? So basically, it's we're passing in uh, all the stuff that we don't know how to deal with, and we're just hoping that it's just going to work out somehow, right? And so a, a monad, by the way, is just over here, right? So it sort of looks like a functor. And in fact, it extends a functor extends a functor which is down there so it's not going to compile right and it just goes and defines a flat map right and usually again it usually goes like from a to b but it's going to go from b to c in fact uh, you know what let's go to functor let's copy the map let's go to monad let's paste this thing in right because there has to be some relationship between the functors and 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 the monads right it's the same relationship as with you know map and you know uh, map and flat map and like the regular functions and these these special kinds of functions okay so the the definition looks exactly the same as, as for map it's just that this uh, this thing over here is already wrapped into f right so it's like this uh, let me actually bring it down before i click save uh, let's go to a functor 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 over here Right, so we're just going to place it uh, right underneath. And uh, trade monad takes set parameters. Yes, uh, of course. We need to get the monad for this f. Okay, right. So, um, yeah. So now it naturally worked. This is classic composition. Uh, this is exactly what monads are for. And in functional programming, we have a lot of classic functions because we want to uh, we want to describe the side effects instead of letting you know instead of performing side effects. This is what I meant in the beginning of the video. You know, in functional programming, you actually never write programs. You only write descriptions of programs. Okay. So um, now that we have our class arrow, let's actually go and um, let's go to monad and you know. In order for it to be a proper monad, we need to autocomplete it a little bit. Uh, well, just complete it a little bit. We're not going to use much of this, but um, we're basically it's going to have a pure, which is just a factory, right? F of B. Uh, and, um, you know, because we're going through functor, we can actually implement flat, flat map, okay? We can actually implement flat map because flat map, uh, we can just call a map, right? We can just call it map with F of B. This is F of B, okay? F of B and with the BFC. BFC, which is this one. I'm sorry, this is this one. Again, if this goes too fast, I know that this is a little bit complicated. I have a dedicated video for for monads. Okay. Now, if we try to compile this, it's going to say, "Hey, uh, you know, you wanted to give me this, but I but I gave you that." In fact, um, let's actually do this so that we see val x equals this, and let's return x so that we see the proper message. Okay. Yeah, so basically this is the proper message. It said, I wanted f of c, but you're giving me like this wrapped f in, in, inside of inside of an f. And so uh, what we need to do is we just need to have flatten, right? So there's one one of the ways to define a monad is in terms of map and flatten, right? And we can do this because the way we define a monad is we said that every monad is a functor, okay? So we can do flatten, which we're not going to play around with today, actually, right? So it takes f of f of b and does f of b right because it, it will literally fix this compilation error right so we need to go from f of f to f right so we need to flatten it right so all we need to do is we need to flatten flatten this x like this all right uh let's align this inline this like that and like that and like that and like that and like that all right so uh let's not forget to add the the syntax and um i'm gonna go and copy paste it because it's just so much, so much time to type all of this out. So where are we going to put it? Mm -hmm. Where's the syntax for a functor? Yeah, over here. So this is the syntax for map. This is going to be the syntax for for and then. And this this uh, operator is called the fish operator, right? So this is the greater equals uh, greater, right? And uh, Fira code, which I totally love, uh, converts it into a function. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is the syntax for uh, for the classic composition, and we also need to have a syntax for uh, flat map, which is going to be over here. Syntax for flat map, right? It's the same as always, right? It just takes it apart, delegates to um, delegates to uh, to the one to the other one, and you know because we're because we're uh, you know because we're already at it, uh, let's actually go and define syntax for flatten as well. Um, let's go and just do inline. 
final def flatten some C comes in. Uh, for this one, we need uh, the compiler to prove that uh, this f of b uh, can actually be transformed into an f of f of c. And again, as a reminder, we did all of this very very slowly in the video about um, in the video about monads. Okay, so we can get the monad out, the monad out. We can do flatten view of f of b, f of b. By the way, let's call this one bfc, bfc and bfc this one as well bfc this one as well bfc all right uh yeah what's wrong with me in line all right oh, what the hell you know let's also let's also go and uh, have a uh, have a have one for pure all right so let's call implicit class syntax for pure i'm re-implementing the half of, of the cats library over here man all the things that I'm doing for science. For this, we actually need to define applicative. Applicative, if you've never heard about it before, don't worry, we basically already have it. So if we can get uh, the applicative for F, then we can just call pure on it, and pass it in A. Okay, and applicative is something that sits between the functor and the map, which is over here, all right? So it's gonna be trade applicative of some F, right? F, same as monad, it extends the functor and a monad extends an applicative, right? So it's basically a layer a layer between them, right? And all it does is defines this pure function. That's all, okay? So it already compiles. No, 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 we have an applicative. We have functor, applicative, we have monad. We have syntax for all of them. And now we can actually go and start uh, using them, okay? So let's say that we had a, um, we had a monad for um, options, okay? Let's say that we had implicit dev monad for options. Okay, so it's going to be monad for option. Okay, it's going to be new monad for option. And let's ask metals and bloop to help us out over here. We can implement all members like this. Beautiful. All right, so uh, let's rearrange them a little bit. Okay, so pure is basically sum of B. Uh, map is, well, we can just delegate to, um, to, to option. Map F. And over here is going to be ffp dot flatten like this. All right. So now we have this monad for for option, and now we can go and we can do f classly. Okay. So we're gonna have a function that goes from int to the option of string. We're basically gonna say this is ff, and we're gonna use the this function over here. Which again, let's let's jump in there. Um, okay. I wanted to show you which one this is because I'm starting to forget myself uh, which one this is. Okay, so this is the syntax for map. Okay, let's actually do map. Um, well, actually, it's the map for. Um, yeah, it's the map on the functor. It's fine. Okay, so let's do let's do that. Okay, and now we can go and ask for the applicative. For option, for example, and we can do pure. Okay, so basically, just just wrap this thing, um, into an option. Applicative. All right. And uh, because we did this super weird syntax thing, thing, we can actually go and just say, okay, that the thing that comes in, just call pure, pure option. Okay, this is this um, uh, syntax that we did in the in the end, pure, um, this one. Okay. All right. Let's actually go and do classly composition now. So we can do f classly and then g. Okay. So this is what we're gonna have, right? So we're gonna have the int. Okay. And it goes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. It goes through option of string like this, and it's going to produce the option of, of char. Basically, what this thing, this thing did is it converted the f into a classly f, right? This is why it's called f classly, right? So it was going from into string, now it's going from into option of string, right? It basically just wraps it into an option, okay? Um, and I did that so that we can, we have, you know, two classly uh, functions to compose, right? Because without having two functions, there's no need for monads because monads are only there to compose two classly functions. So I needed to have two classly functions. So I have created, I have converted f to a classly function and g has been a classly function from the very beginning, right? It was going from string, not to char, but to string and to wrapped into, into uh, option of char. All right. So now we can go and we can say f classly which is this one. Now we can use this fish operator like this, and we can just give it the G, okay? And then we can go print line, F 
classly and then G1337 like this and uh, yeah we can't have both of them right like that okay and it is a sum of, sum of one the same as before let's actually go into go into that and uh, yeah sum of one same as before great now why did I did all of that why did I go through the monad just implemented it for no reason right because before I said you know there's there's a map and and then and there's a relationship between them uh, but now I just went crazy and implement this monad. now uh, the reason is that we can actually go and implement a monad for functions so if we go into our um, so somewhere over here we're gonna have a functor for functions okay over here uh, it turns out that we can actually go and say that everywhere where we say functor we can actually say monad monad okay and now uh, metals is going to help us to implement the ones that are missing so the pure safe and also the okay so let's have pure let's have map and let's implement flatten over here all right now pure is kind of simple okay so b comes in a to b needs to comes out right so we need to produce a function that that goes from a to b right so effectively a is ignored right we can actually even go and use an underscore here okay that was that was kind of simple okay and because we're we're going to, in, in our mode we're going through the functor we actually don't need to implement flat map ourselves we're actually going to do this in a couple of minutes just for educational purposes um, but all we need to do is we need to implement flatten and implementing uh, flatten is actually very very simple I don't even need to, to look at my script okay so we need to, to go from A to B okay let's just start writing this out we have an A and we need to somehow produce a B okay so um, well make sure I'm just gonna do produce B okay so what can we do with an a well the only thing that we can do is we can stick into ffp ffp a okay now what comes out well another function comes out from a to b and what do we need to produce we need to produce a b and what do we have well we have an a so we're just basically going to stick an a again into it okay just following the types it just falls out this is exactly what i meant just go and you know play around with the stuff and like all of these things it just like fall out fall out of this um of this uh theorems for free thing you know, this is exactly what, I, what I've been talking about in the video about um, uh, Curry Howard and uh, Lambach uh, isomorphism. Okay, watch it uh, if you if you haven't seen it. Okay, cool. So uh, we can now go and um, play with it. Okay, so let me actually bring down the person. Where's the person? So let's bring down um, these two. Yeah, yeah. Let's bring down these two. Actually, let's bring down. Hmm. Let me do that. Let's bring down all of these three okay let me just uh can i cut them out a bunch of that stuff's not gonna compile let's do this let's do that okay that's enough all right so i'm gonna remove that paste them over here all right so uh what we're gonna have now is we're gonna have another function we're gonna have a function called rendered person it's gonna be a function that takes a person takes a person and a boolean and um, string comes out okay so it's going to be a function that takes a person and it started on even day which is a boolean okay and it's just going to have a helper over here it's going to say val did or did not start start which is going to be a string so we're going to say if started on even day then we're going to return started and otherwise we're going to say did not start okay so this is just a val and we're going to use this val over here we're just going to do this like that all right so we're just going to say person did or did not start oh come on no auto completion man did or did not start on even day like this all right very very simple function okay so now we can go and we can have a list of alpha bravo and Bravo and Charlie I'm using the NATO alphabet every time I need to generate people all right so uh, we're gonna zip them with one two three and we're going to map map right so we have a tuple in there okay so we're gonna do person dot tupled right because now we have a tuple of, of a string and an int okay tupled and uh, let's actually press enter over here let's create also more space tupled and then we're going to say and then and now we can say did person start on day of year okay which is this function right basically person to boolean okay 
and now we can flat map flat map rendered person rendered person rendered person wants a person and then a boolean and uh over here like this did did person start on day and you know what what flat map wants is it wants it wants a current function and it wants the current function to be flipped and so uh what we're going to do is we're going to do current and we're going to do flipped like this okay and in the end we're just going to print it out for each print line all right so it's going to say alpha one did not start on even day because one is not even uh, bravo two started on even day and charlie three did not start on even day okay so uh flat map allows you to have access to sort of like the previous computation right this is what monads are, are about right they give you the act they, they can be dependent on the previous um uh previous function and uh, therefore because there is this notion of previous, there is a notion of order, which is why flat map uh, are, are always about sequencing uh, operations, right? Monads are about sequencing uh, the operations, okay? So this is some weird code over here, so we can uh, we can go and um, improve it a little bit. So let's have a better rendered person. By the way, I'm gonna show you in a couple of seconds the version without the flat map, because I know that this is a bit, a bit too hard to understand, okay? So we're gonna have better uh, rendered person. So we're gonna flip it and we're gonna curry it, right? So we're gonna say this is gonna be a function where a boolean comes in and then a function from person to string comes out okay so basically if you give me a boolean then i'm going to tell you how to render a person okay so basically we need to flip these like like this okay so this is the flipped and now we also need to curry it right so basically remove this remove that like this right we have this automatic way to do this anyway but i wanted to do it uh like this as well okay so basically it's um a better rendered person like this okay because like usually like this did person start on day of year usually what it would give you it, it just gives you a boolean right so if you go over there whoa um mm -hmm. it just gives you a boolean right it takes the person and it gives you a boolean so the person sort of gets lost but flat map makes sure that it that it keeps preserved right so it, it um so flat map will have access to this boolean that was produced by by this thing but it will also have access to the person that uh, was there in order to produce that boolean, right? And so you have access to both, and therefore you can render it, right? Dependent on dependent on that um, on that boolean. Okay, so uh, let's go and improve that code a little bit because remember that we're just playing. Okay, so uh, you know, and then is the same as map, so we can basically uh, have another map over here, right? Where we have this person that tuppled. Okay, and now we don't. Oh man person that tuppled over here, right? And now we can remove it from here. And now we don't need to do the end then. Okay, it's gonna look much, much nicer. And let's align that. Okay, so basically we're creating a bunch of people and passing it into these two um, compose functions. And this one actually is starting to look, in fact, maybe we can also do this. Okay, so this one is actually starting to look better than the version um, that we would have had uh, without the flat map, right? So without the flat map, um, this this one would look like this, right? So some some person would come in, okay? And we would need to call better rendered person, okay? And we would need to give it did person starting on day of year, right? And we need to give it a person, and then we would need to give the person again over here, right? So if we if we copy this, and um, let's uh, let's have this one in between so that it's a bit more visible, okay? Like this. So if you copy this, and if we go to our flat map, then it should look exactly the same. In fact, I believe that we don't have the flat map. Let's uh, where's our monad? Um, no, actually, we need the monad for functions. Okay, so we actually don't need don't need uh, don't don't have the flat map. Okay, but let's uh, actually go and say uh, override override uh, flat map. Okay, so if I save it now, it's gonna throw an exception. Okay, because it's it's over there. Okay, so we can do this. Okay, so again, like this is the blueprint for this. What are we gonna have? Well, A is gonna come in, but our A is going to be a person. So I'm gonna call it. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as A. Okay, A is gonna come in okay now what, we, what can we do with the a well we can pass it into f of b of a okay what comes out the function uh that takes a b and produces an f of c we need to wrap this a into bfc 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 okay what comes out a function from that that goes from from a to c okay well i guess we need to apply the a again okay so it's basically it looks exactly the same the same thing as as um as uh this one uh but i did something something wrong I did something wrong that would be B of C, A, and A over here. Now, that's the order. 
Okay, so it's this one is up here for piece over there. Okay, like this, right? Because uh, basically this A is over here, A, A, and A, B of C is over here, F of B is over here, and now it looks exactly the same, right? So as you can see, our code works with this definition or with the one that goes through map and flat map. It does exactly the same thing. Now, that's actually all I got for you today. I even considered to cover the Y combinator, but I believe that we went crazy enough. Uh, we'll talk about the Y combinator some, some other time. I hope that you had as much fun as I did when I was preparing for this video. Uh, just know that most of this stuff is implemented in libraries like uh, CATS and uh, Scala Z. I didn't check Scala Z actually. Right, so for example, a, a functor and a monad for for functions is already defined in, in CATS. And you know, uh, obviously the functors, applicative monads, and you know the contravariant, all of this stuff is in, in in libraries like cats. Please remember that the purpose of this video was not strictly educational. It was just to encourage you to play around with the stuff and, you know, so that you can develop a sense for, uh, or basically a sense for, for code smell and also a sense for, um, for the fact that when you're playing really complicated things like this, they just, they just kind of fall out, right? So in functional programming, you just need to follow the types and then um, good things will happen. <laughs> So without any further ado, I might actually upload this code somewhere because you guys keep asking me for code and I need to start uploading my codes uh, at some point because as I already mentioned, you guys keep asking. In any case, it's been Vlad, diamondsideu.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today, even though this was strictly speaking not the purpose of this video, in any case, if you learned something today, consider supporting me on Patreon and thus watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.